Greetings, disciples, friends, and wayward souls, and welcome to another Planet Zoo tutorial. Today we're going to be covering staff. So we already talked a little bit about keepers and especially feeding habits in the previous video, so check that out in the description if you haven't already. Otherwise, today's going to be kind of a lengthy video, so if you want, you can skip to the different kinds of staff if you just want to learn more about those. However, I've made the video as concise as I could, and all of the information in here is useful. So it's up to you whether or not you'd like to watch the whole thing, but I would highly recommend it. Some of these tips are going to vary a little bit based on your habitat configurations. And before we start actually going into the specifics, there are three main types of habitat configurations. And that would be the cluster, like we have here. And this is what I've seen in most people's zoos, where you have a bunch of habitats that are close together, with the staff buildings kind of in the center of them. This is the most efficient layout, but not always the prettiest. Next, we have the large habitat layout. You might have something like a savanna habitat or a very large breeding habitat, where you have quite a lot of animals, but you have very few staff buildings and they're clustered very close together. These usually only consist of one or two habitats per work zone. And lastly, we have what I would call a natural configuration. This is the kind of thing that you see in quote unquote natural zoos that try to keep the local wildlife and fauna intact by spreading the habitats out more sparsely so that you're seeing one every 100 or 200 feet instead of every 10 feet. Now this is going to be the biggest nightmare in terms of staff having to actually go back and forth because there's going to be the most walking distance no matter how much you try to minimize it. Alright, so back to the cluster habitat for now. When it comes to keepers, the way that I like to govern these is with what I call the three-fourths rule, and that is three keepers per four habitats. Now this really only works with something like this where you have two animals or four animals in each of these habitats. If you have many more than that, then you're probably going to want to increase your number of keepers, largely just to keep track of the poop, because it means they're going to be spending more time in the habitat cleaning poop, and you can't have two keepers in the habitat at one time, so one of them has to be cleaning poop, and then they might get tired and leave, and not refill the food. Now if there's only two animals worth of poop in here, they're going to be cleaning a lot less, which means there are going to be less issues. So depending on how many animals are in here, you might want to add one or even two keepers to this three-fourths rule. Now I would highly recommend keeping your keepers untrained. This is because a level 5 keeper costs the same as hiring three level 1 keepers. And it's never a good idea to just have one keeper handling a habitat because a lot of the time they'll go on break and especially if they have multiple habitats to look over, it can be a couple months before they get back to these habitats and in a couple of months an animal can go from eating to starving to death. So again, always make sure that you have at least two keepers assigned to a habitat and I don't mean two keepers per habitat but just make sure that there are two of them in the work zone that habitat is in, at least. Even if you just have one habitat, you want to make sure there are two keepers. Now the second type of habitat configuration you might have is that of large habitats. This is like safari animals, like we mentioned. And this operates on an entirely different system when it comes to keepers, specifically because of how much poo is in the habitats. With this many animals, they're going to be crapping all the time. Now, the best way to deal with this is to have at least one, if not two, keepers that are specifically dedicated to cleaning poop. Now, this is the one time that I would suggest training your keepers to level 5. And lastly, we come to the natural habitat configuration. And this is where things get a little bit weird, like I said. It's a little harder to actually control and to keep efficient. But you can still do your best to make sure that these paths don't go too far away. From your keeper hut and your staff center. So basically the way you're going to handle this with keepers is just to have separate work zones that are like small clusters where you might not have as many exhibits because you do need to accommodate for walk time and if this exhibit over here is too far away you don't want to try to cram it into this staff zone so just just don't <laughs> save yourself the trouble and don't. Instead make a separate staff zone and it's fine if there's only a couple of habitats in it because it's going to be worth it in the long run for efficiency to have these multiple buildings since building operation costs are much smaller than staff salaries. And it also generally tends to make sense for some of the other buildings that you're going to be using because you don't need them to be all over the place, you just need them to be in a couple of different zones. 
Now we'll talk about how to use these kind of zones later on for the other staff. Last thing we need to talk about when it comes to keepers are exhibits. Now obviously these are the little square things that you can place around the world and they are much, much easier to take care of than any of the regular habitats. Now the way this works is basically the keeper just has to come to the keeper hut once to get food and then they have exhibit food here. You can see there's five different slots. They'll fill up as many of those slots as they need to and then they'll come out here and they can fill the food for up to five exhibits at once. Now they also have to clean these but they do that generally at the same time that they do the feeding. Now this generally means that you're going to have one keeper that's keeping track of several exhibits at once. Now if you have a particularly large exhibit hall, you might consider having two keepers, you know, if there's 10 or 12 exhibits, but beyond that, it's really not much of a need to have more. Now next up on the list of staff is veterinarians. Now veterinarians have two primary purposes, and that is health and healing your animals and research. Health is very simple. All you need to do is make sure that in each of your work zones, you have a veterinary surgery that is accessible and I would recommend one veterinarian per four habitats in a cluster. Now you might want to bump that up to two veterinarians in a configuration like this because as you can see I only have one veterinary surgery because my idea here is that we can have the veterinarians assigned to both of these work zones by creating another work zone that consists of this break room, this break room, all of the habitats, and this veterinary center. Now, veterinary research is a little bit weird, and it does vary from mechanic research in one key way, being that whenever veterinarians are performing research, they actually need to come to the habitat of the animal they are researching every now and then before returning to their research center. Now, this does mean that whoever is doing the research should be housed near the animals they are researching. So what I would suggest doing is just having one vet and naming them Research Monkey or some similar name so that you know what their purpose is when you're actually looking at them in the vet research tab so that you know which one to assign to each of these animals as you're researching them. And then you just need to make sure that in each cluster or in each work zone you have a research lab so that whenever you add a new animal to one of those habitats you can move your Research Monkey over here assign them to this work zone and then they will make sure that they are close to whatever animal they're researching and they'll have a research center available. So on that topic we're gonna go ahead and get into caretakers now what their duties are and how best to maintain their work zones. Now caretakers can be used to clean or do all of the things that you see over here so anywhere that you have an abundance of trash cans, an abundance of benches, basically an abundance of people, because that's where you're gonna see the most litter and the most issues with trash, you're gonna to wanna to put a, a few caretakers. So what I like to do is split up things into plazas. I very much do not like to have one or two solo shops. I always wanna put them together with maybe three or four shops and a bathroom and maybe an ATM or two just to make sure that everything is clustered so that you don't have to spread your caretakers out as much, which means that you're gonna be getting better coverage in those areas that need it most. Now caretakers are a little easier in that they only need a staff center assigned to their work zone. And they have this special thing where if you assign them to two different staff centers, then they'll basically walk between the two of them and they'll clean things up as they go. And it's important that you have two of them so that if they walk over here and they clean all this stuff up and they use all their energy, they don't have to walk all the way back to this first staff center because they can come over here and rest at this second one. Now this type of staff zone is what I call a patrol. It is a point A to point B kind of route and they're gonna take care of everything on the way. They'll even go a little bit out of their way to maybe clean the kind of stuff that's over here. Now this does end up crowding out your work zones menu because you'll have quite a few to work with, especially if you do this across the entire zoo. But the nice thing is that you don't have to edit work zones all that often, and it's gonna be much more of a headache to have to micromanage your people than it is gonna to have to be to set it up once and forget it. Now in this particular plaza, you can see that we have 12 gopi sodas, which is probably still not enough to satisfy guests' thirst need. As you can see, we have two caretakers that are assigned exclusively to this plaza, 
So that means that any of the trash bins or the litter or the benches that get messed up, they're gonna go ahead and fix that. And then we have a third caretaker over here that's assigned to this staff center and this staff center so that they'll walk between the two and they'll make sure that this path from one plaza, ideally to a second plaza, is clean. Also, when it comes to staff needs, you might need more than two caretakers or three caretakers or five or whatever, and that's gonna very largely depend on how many guests you have in your zoo. Now keep in mind that this is gonna grow over time, so don't be afraid to throw some more caretakers or some more security on top of what you already have because those needs will change the more people are in your park. Now this brings us to security guards, the protectors of the innocent and the masters of catching thieves. They usually suck though. Um, so keep that in mind that you're generally going to have have quite a few of these and they have very low detection ranges, but you're going to assign them very similarly to the caretakers. We might have one of these per plaza and then one of them on each patrol going between plazas. But like I said, their detection ranges are not very large when they're untrained, so you might consider training them. They're not super expensive to pay their salaries, so it's really not too bad of an idea to, to train them up. And you're also going to want to invest in some security cameras. And these are actually really cheap to run on a monthly basis, and they help you out a lot because they increase the detection range of each of these security guards. So it makes them easier to see when criminal activity happens. And I would especially encourage you to put them in crowded plazas like this because each of these benches can be vandalized and each of these trash cans can be vandalized and any education items can be vandalized. So all of those, you want to be able to be covered by whatever kind of patrol area you have for this person. Do keep in mind too that do not disturb and do not feed signs, which can be found in the same security tab, are also able to be vandalized. So what you can do with these is just simply move them a little bit further away from the path. And we'll talk in a future video about how you're actually going to use these. But if you already know how to use them, that's just a little helpful tip. Next up on the list are vendors. Now vendors obviously are the people that tend to your stalls. And you're going to have quite a few vendors, especially if you have a ton of plazas around your place. And what you're going to do with your vendors is basically the best way to do it is to just have a dedicated staff room for the vendors and uh, this is going to just correlate to the plaza and again you can make a route using two different staff zones still but you want to make sure that your vendors are all assigned to this one staff zone because if they're wandering back and forth between plazas that's going to be a huge amount of travel time and you don't want that now the kind that you have really is, is up to you it sort of depends on who all you want to have assigned to it generally this is where i like to put my mechanic research the workshops here just because it's it's a big staff center most of the time for me and it's out of the way it's not disconnected from the path like the one i'll show you guys in a minute when we talk about mechanics and it just keeps things simple because they're also here to fix this thing anyway so they might as well be be here researching another important though not necessarily crucial tip is that it's usually a good idea to have a few extra vendors sitting around generally i'll add one extra vendor per three shops that there are and this is because whenever these guys get tired, the ones that are in the shops, if there is a vendor available that is not tired, they will come and actually relieve them, which is excellent because it means that everybody that's in line for this vendor is going to stay in line, and they're just going to do this quick swap, where one of them will get out and the other one will jump in, and they keep everybody that's in that line, they keep the line flowing smoothly, and it's just, it's just awesome. Also, vendors are the one staff that I would highly recommend promoting to level 5, regardless of anything else. This is because the amount of additional profit that you're earning from their work speed is much more than the amount that you're paying them so that they'll go faster. So we've saved mechanics for last because they are actually kind of similar to several of the other types before them. But the largest reason they differ from those types is in what they do, which obviously is repairing things. So the things they repair are barriers, power facilities, water treatment facilities, ATMs, toilet blocks, and then vandalized items, which includes education screens and these signs for do not disturb and do not litter. So generally, whenever you have a staff hub here that is associated with your keepers and your habitats, you want to also have at least one maintenance worker that's also in that hub. Now, if you have a clustered hub of habitats like this, 
then generally you can get away with having one mechanic. You might have to have two if you're having any issues, but I usually don't. Now, of course, for something like the natural habitat setup, you're going to need more than one mechanic because they're going to spend a lot of their time traveling from one habitat to the next. Now, what I would do is set up a patrol between these two staff centers right here and just have the mechanic assigned to patrol between them and then they'll hit all of these exhibits as well if you have them assigned. Plus, you can also assign these transformers and any water purifiers you have in the area so that the maintenance will cover those as well. Now, like we talked about with caretakers, it's a good idea to assign these guys to the patrols that we talked about. And that's because you're going to see a lot of these kinds of objects, these vandalizable objects, plus things like ATMs along your path, even in between your little plazas that you've built. So it's important to have maintenance regularly roaming between those things so they can fix stuff if it goes wrong. Now, in terms of mechanic research, the simplest and fastest way to do it is just to have a mechanic who is set up in his own little square that's off from the rest of the world. It doesn't have to actually be excluded in terms of the path being further away from everything, but I would recommend Research Monkey as a name so that way you know when you go into the zoo research screen which one he is, and I would recommend training him up to level 5 just so that he does it a lot faster. You really only need one mechanic on this, but if you want, you can have two. And then you also want to make sure that you uncheck all of these except for conduct mechanic research and repair facility because he does need to repair his own power facility unless you want someone else to do it for him. All right, now that we've gone over all the different types of staff and how to employ them in a more efficient way, we're going to talk about some general tips for each of them to really maximize that efficiency. So first off, we're going to start with distance, which we've talked about two or three times already. And if you have a large distance to cover between your habitats, so for instance, in this, in this work zone, I have one, two, there's going to be a third, a fourth, and a fifth habitat, and they're all across a pretty wide distance. So I have one staff zone that is right over here, and then I have another that is right in here, if I can get in. Excuse me, mountain. Um, one staff zone that's right in here so that these are both connected, and if the zookeeper needs to come over here, then they can rest, and then they can go on about their day without having to walk all the way back to this other one. Now, if you really are looking to maximize your efficiency and see exactly where your employees are spending their time, then all you need to do is click on that employee and go to their staff statistics tab, because this shows just about everything that has to do with that staff and what they've been doing with all of their time. This is a much more accurate representation of their workload than the little alert that comes up that says they have a low or a high workload. That really has nothing to do with it and doesn't tell you anything compared to this chart. Lastly, another way to check the efficiency of your staff and to figure out whether or not you need more is to go into your habitat menu and then look under the maintenance tab because here you can see how long it's been since each of the respective staff types has visited that habitat. So typically if it's been more than two months for a keeper, that means that animal could have starved in the time since they've been there last. And with mechanics, if it's been more than about a year and a half, and especially if it's been two years, then the barriers could have failed in that time. So you need to make sure that they're checking them once a month and once a year or less. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today, but I appreciate you checking out this video and make sure that you check out the other videos on my channel, especially the Planet Zoo tutorials, all of which thus far are actually in the description below. There you can also find a link to my Steam Workshop, and if you'd like to download much of what you've seen today, including the zoo that we used for this tutorial, then you can check that out. That is on there. If you guys have any comments, questions, or if you have any game suggestions, if you follow my Let's Plays, or if you have any video suggestions, if you'd like to learn more about Planet Zoo, please put those in the comments below, and I'll do my very best to answer each of you. Like the video if you liked the video, share it with anyone who you think might benefit from this tutorial, and as always, thanks for watching. You guys have been great, and I've been Hipster Jesus.